Glory to God, we are very thankful to God because once more we are here to worship his holy name and to give him all the glory and all the honor. He is so worthy of our praise and we don't deserve this wonderful opportunity to be worshiping him and praising him. But it's a new day and the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. So let's get ready to praise him. Let's start by... Uh, a word of prayer in the presence of the Lord right there where you are at home. Close your eyes and let's be concentrated in the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this wonderful, awesome opportunity that you grant us. That we can be here, Lord, to praise you, to worship you. We are here in the temple, but in your house. But each of your children, Lord, are right there in their homes Oh, Lord, they are concentrated in your presence. They are concentrated in your word and in giving you all the glory and all the honor. I ask you that the anointing of your Holy Spirit be manifested in each house and that we may enjoy your presence, that we may enjoy praising your holy name. In Jesus Christ's name, we ask you, Father, amen and amen. So we are ready for us to sing. Let us start by this song that says, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dear in the light of his glory and
Aleluya. Jesus, for my pardon, 
streams of abundance flow Blessed be your name Blessed be your name When I'm found in the desert place Though I walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise When the darkness closes in Lord, still I will see Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name Samuel David with the message of the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This morning we are really glad to be once more in the presence of God so that the Lord may give us the wonderful blessing to receive his word. It has been worthy uh, to praise God. It has been worthy to worship his name because the word of the Lord says that wherever there are two or three gathered in his name, he is there in the midst of them. So this morning we want to take the part uh, that uh, is for the Word of God, and I want to 
welcome you to open your Bibles to the book of Ruth, chapter 4. Book of Ruth, chapter 4, we are going to read the word of the Lord here. And uh, we'll start in verse 11. And the word of the Lord says like this in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. The Lord make the woman that is coming to your house like Rachel and like Leah, which two did build a house of Israel. And you do worthily in Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem. And let your house be like the house of Pharaoh, whom Tamar bare unto Judah, of the seed which the Lord shall give you of this young woman. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went in into her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare his son. And the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which has not left you this day without the kinsman, that his name be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto you a restorer of your life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law, which loves you, she is better to you than seven sons and uh, has born uh, him. Let's pray and present this part. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the time that you Grant us today to receive the word that comes from your throne. We know, Lord, that you alone have words of eternal life. We have read your word, O oh God, and we are ready to receive whatever you have in store for us. We want to ask you this morning, as we are in your presence, to, greet, to give us, O oh Lord, a mighty spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, as you always do with your people. In the name of Jesus, we ask you in light the eyes of our understanding that we may see whatever you have prepared for us, O oh God, and that we may receive in our spirits and souls that foundation we need so that we may continue serving you in spirit and in truth and bear much more and better fruits for your glory. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. This morning we want to take this part of the scripture we read here in the book of Ruth in chapter 4 to speak under the title, From the Worst to the Best. We are always studying the word of the Lord concerning the plans of God with his people. And whenever we come to the presence of the Lord and we examine what the Lord tells us in the Holy Scriptures, we may learn everywhere that God has prepared many good things for us and that the circumstances are not the ones to dictate what is really going to happen to the ones who believe in the Lord. Here we have the story of a woman called Naomi, but also the story concentrates much more on Ruth. Ruth the Moabites, a woman that uh, was a widow. The story, the complete story is related in the whole book of Ruth. You will find there how Naomi, who is the one who started together with his husband, with her husband, sorry, and uh, the two sons, they went to Moab because of the situation that they were facing in the land of Bethlehem and the land of Judah in those days. The scriptures also tells us how this uh, family was reduced because in spite the two sons married and uh, in spite that the future could look bright, However, something started happening. The word of the Lord says that Naomi's husband died. And also, the two sons died, and then the woman was left alone, and just with the two daughters-in-law. And in a specific moment, 
this woman said, it is of no use for me to be here. They came to Moab just looking for a better future because of the uh, famine in their land and uh, because she wanted to do better in life. But now when things are not working that good, she says, it is of no use for me to stay here. I better go back home. And when she told the daughters-in-law <clears throat> her plans, the word of the Lord says that the daughters-in-law said, we'll go with you. But then the woman explained to them and said, it's, it's not good because you are still a young woman and uh, I don't have more sons for me to marry you. And uh, also your parents and your relatives live here. You are also in your land. If you come with me, you will be foreigners. And all these things she explained to the daughters-in-law and then the word of the Lord says, one of them, she just kissed Naomi and went back home. But the word of the Lord says also that Ruth, that is called Ruth the Moabitess because she was from Moab. The word of the Lord says, she said, don't ask me to leave you because wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you live, I will live. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. And wherever you die, I will die. And then when the old lady Naomi understood that it was like that, she said, okay, let's go. And then the story develops in the situation when they come back to the land and uh, they were now destitute because there was no man at home. Just the widow, I mean, the eldest widow and the youngest widow. And uh, when they came, this young lady, Ruth, said, I have to go out and work, do something about uh, the situation because we need some bread. And so she went out, she started gathering the sheaves in a, uh, in a field that belonged to a man called Boaz. But she didn't know anything about it. She just started working from morning to evening. And uh, the uh, steward of this uh, field, he said to the rest of the servants, don't bother this young lady because there was a law in Israel that uh, whenever they were just gathering the sheaves and they were collecting the harvest, then if there was anything left behind, they shouldn't come to pick up among the sheaves because it was given by the Lord as a law, as a humanitarian law for the orphans, widows, and foreigners. So the woman gathered these. She went back home. She shared with uh, Naomi what had happened to her. And uh, then they told her, it is the field of Boaz, the field where you are just harvesting. And then the rest of the story comes to the point when the, following all the protocols, this young girl just let Boaz know that she is Ruth and that uh, there is a law that he is the one who has the power to redeem not only her, but to redeem the lions and to redeem the whole family. And the man promised this young lady and said, listen, I know that you are a virtuous woman. I will do for you as you say, but there is a kinsman that is closer to you all than me. If he wants to redeem, he will redeem. But if he doesn't redeem the lands and you, then I will do it for you. And uh, when the morning came and Boaz went to the gate of the city and he found a gentleman, he spoke to him in front of the judges and in front of all the people 
Then he did business with him and said, listen, Naomi, she came back from the uh, land of Moab and now she's selling the land. You are the one who has the opportunity because you are closer than I, so you can redeem the land. And the man said, okay, I will do it. Good land. But then Boaz said, but you must be clear that the day you buy the lands from the hand of Naomi, so the same day you have to marry Ruth the Moabites. Because she is the widow of one of the, uh, the ones who should inherit the land. And then the man said, uh, let me think about it. Mm, you better redeem in my place. Because I think that if I marry this woman, I can damage my heritage. So Boaz married the woman. I want to just take this case to show you how the Lord is an specialist in taking the worst to make it the best. Sometimes when we are walking in life, we don't understand the things that are happening to us. Because situations come and uh, most of the times you cannot say what is going to happen in life. I mean, many things in life may happen as a surprise for you. All of us are in. Sometimes we do plans and we draw in a piece of paper or somewhere more or less what we expect to do in life and even some people dare to write the age they consider they should change job and so on and the date they should retire and the date they should have this and that. And, but many times life is not as we think it is. And sometimes all these situations which are not that good like in the case of Naomi and even the case of Ruth because Ruth didn't marry with that consideration in mind. When Ruth married, she was a young girl. She never expected to be a widow so soon. And I think it is the same for many people. Sometimes you start the business you never consider going into bankruptcy. Sometimes you start your studies and you never consider in just quitting your studies. Sometimes you start doing something which is special for you and you don't expect to fail in that. And so many things in life may come on the way and that is exactly in those moments when this story takes more relevance because it is right here when we understand that our God is mighty enough and is an specialist in taking the worst in our lives and make it the best. Maybe for human beings, we, we don't have that explanation. We cannot say much because when we start considering this, we say, but the, not everything that is really bad can be turned into something good. It depends, my friend. If it is you and I who are taking control of the things, I just agree with you, we cannot make it good so easily. But if it is the Lord God, the creator of heaven and earth, who is in full control, not only of our situations, but also of ourselves, of every single step we take in life, it is, if it is the most high God, the eternal God, the one who knows everything, and the one whom the Bible says that he prepared a way for me since before the foundation of the world. That God that saw me, not at the time I was born, but he knew me according to what the Lord says in the scriptures. He knew me before I was formed 
in my mother's womb, before I was formed. Then I realized that yes, it is possible because he is the one who drew a plan for my life. He is the one whom in eternity decided about me. He didn't expect until the time came and he didn't, he, he wasn't taken by surprise for the situations that you and I are facing at a specific moment. Sometimes a sickness, sometimes financial problems, sometimes relationships which are not good, sometimes failures in something that we started. Whatever it is, God knew beforehand what was going to happen. And let me tell you something, your God knows you from before you were formed in your mother's womb and he knows you until the end of your days because he is eternal. And being eternal, he can foresee me. It's not at the time when I am facing things that the Lord knows what is going on in my life. But it is from the very beginning, he knows everything about me. And he has prepared a way to escape. The word of the Lord says that no uh, temptation that is come to you, no situation, no tribulation, no trial that is come to you is beyond your strength, but the Lord knows up to where you can endure these things and then he will make a way for you and I to escape in the midst of those situations. And it is exactly what happened here. Let me focus myself a little bit on Ruth. Ruth was a Moabitess and that was the reason why this man, this closer kingsman didn't want to redeem the land because he said, if I redeem the land, I have to marry this Moabitess woman. But Moabites were not well appreciated in the eyes of the Jewish people, in the eyes of Israel, because they had really bad memories about Moab. The word of the Lord says when the people of Israel, they were coming out of the land of Egypt and the Lord delivered them. And now they were just going through the wilderness and uh, they approach this land of Moab. There was a king there that was called Balak. And Balak just hired a prophet called Balaam. And he said, I want you to curse these people for me because they are coming and uh, if they come and, and they continue with those uh, things that they are doing, they will defeat us. I wanted to just curse them so that they may be destroyed. And then Balaam came, but the Lord didn't allow this prophet to curse the people of God. And this king of Moab said, I will not give you any salary because you didn't do what I asked you to do. But Balaam said, listen, God is not letting me curse these people. I cannot curse them because God is in the midst. But be quiet, cool down. I know that it is impossible for me to curse them, but I know how they may be cursed and they will take this curse by themselves and then he instructed the king of Moab and said you bring the best women you have the youngest the most beautiful and you organize a worship to your gods and let these young ladies invite the uh, men of Israel to come together with them and let them worship your gods. And because of this pagan worship was mixed with sexual immorality. It means fornication and adultery. When they do that, God will be angry with them and they will be cursed by themselves. And you know, the Bible teaches us, the Bible teaches us that 
that these Moabites ladies came and they seduced the men of Israel and they went uh, to worship those gods and at the same time they committed fornication with all these Moabites. So from that time on, it was the only thing the Israelites got in mind concerning the Moabites. These ladies from that place, they were easy girls. They were ready to do whatever it is. They didn't care. They had no respect of themselves. So to marry a Moabites was a real danger if they considered that from that point of view. So that is why this man, he said, I will never marry this girl Ruth the Moabites. And uh, Ruth, as a foreigner, as a widow, and as a Moabites, had everything against her. There was no possibility. There was no possibility, really. I mean, no man from Israel at any time would like to marry this young lady because she had that big X in her back. She was a Moabitess. She was young. She was widow. She was a foreigner. But then the word of the Lord says, Boaz, he came in front and said, okay, I will marry this woman. I'd like you to read with me. It says in verse 9 in chapter 4, And Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people, You are witnesses today that I have put all that was Elimelech and all that was Kilian's and Malon out of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabites, the wife of Malon, I have purchased to be my wife to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren and from the gate of his place. You are witnesses today. So this man decision, this man decision just brought up this young girl from all his deepest condition, from all the disadvantage she was facing. And she was taken from that position and she married a man that was well acknowledged in his own land. And the word of the Lord says that even the people, the judges and all the neighbors who saw him, they blessed this man and said, all the people that were at the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. And look, look the blessings. The Lord make the woman that is come into your house like Rachel and like Leah, which build the house of Israel. And you do worthily in Ephrata and be famous in Bethlehem. And let your house be like the house of Pharaoh, whom Tamar burned to Judah of the seed which the Lord shall give you of this young woman. So Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife and he went in and when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception and she bare a son. And look, and the women said unto Naomi, blessed be the Lord, which has not left you this day without the kinsman that is, that his name be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto you a restorer of your life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law, which loves you, which is better to you than seven sons, has borne him. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. So what I want to just point to you is when this man decided that he would marry this young girl, he was well respected in his land. And so his neighbors, the elders, the judges, the ones who sat at the gate, the ones who were present at the time when he 
made it official that he was redeeming the land and that he was redeeming through the Moabites, they blessed the man. And they not only blessed the man, but blessed the woman and said, let this woman that come into your house be like Leah, like Rachel. I mean, the two wives of Jacob. Because it says they build the house of Israel. So listen, my friends. Listen, my brothers. Listen. What the Lord does is always taking you from the worst to make it the best. I mean, all your disadvantages don't count in the presence of God. That count in the presence of God is your faithfulness. Because God knew the heart of this woman, Ruth, the Moabites. Maybe, yes, generally speaking, all the people of Israel could say, girls from Moab, they are not good, they are not clean, they, they, they are not uh, worthy to trust. But Ruth had said, your God shall be my God. Your land shall be my land. Where you live, I will live. Where you die, I will die. Your God shall be my God. In other words, this woman had converted herself to the Lord. But it wasn't possible for most of the people to see it because there are some few things that happen just inside you. And people don't know your heart. People may know all the things that appear surrounding you, but they don't know your heart. But I may guarantee you that the God that I am talking about today, he knows what people doesn't know. He knows what people are not ready to understand. He sees the heart of a person. He sees the sincerity of somebody. He knows what is going on inside yourself. Not only the circumstances surrounding you, but the real intentions of your heart. And whenever you are in this great disadvantage, but your heart is right with the Lord, He is specialized in taking the worst to make it the best. You know, and the Lord will always prepare somebody that is right there ready to be your contact. Somebody that is right there who will be your helper. God has prepared everything in advance. He is not waiting until any specific moment to see what he can do for you, but he has prepared beforehand what he will do for you. He will take you from down there and put you in a high place if you can trust in the Lord. Today is the day when we may say, Lord, here am I. I don't mind which are my disadvantages. I don't mind what the circumstances are. I really understand that you are my God, that you are the one who always takes me and do everything for me. So Lord, I trust you and I will put myself, my whole self into your hands that you can do your perfect will with me. So today I want to pray with you. I want to pray if you want to tell the Lord this truth, if you want to express to the Lord what the Lord says in his word, tell him, God, I believe you. I trust you. I don't trust myself. I don't trust my reasoning. I don't trust my circumstances. I'm not trusting men to help me, but I'm trusting you who are the real one, the one who gave me life and the one who has brought me across in this life and you will take me until the end. Father, in the name of Jesus, I praise you for the wonderful time, the great opportunity that you've given us to receive your word. Your word which is always truth. Your word that never fails. You have always been there. And as we are in your presence, we want to ask you today, 
Heavenly Father, show us your mercy. Show us your grace. Show me your power. I surrender myself totally to you. I place myself into your hands. I put my life on the altar, Lord, for me to depend totally on you, Lord. And I'm totally sure that you will take me from any condition, from any situation, to your best. Because you already did it in Jesus Christ for me, for eternal life, for the forgiveness of my sins. And you will also do for me while I live here, while I serve you here on this earth. Let your holy name be glorified in Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, my beloved, may God bless you. And now uh, we will prepare our hearts because in some half an hour we'll start our following service for Sundays. So may God bless you. And uh, if the Lord tarries, we'll be here once more for this wonderful service next Sunday. Amen.